Hi, so in this video we're looking at another um, past paper question. In this one, this is a part two to um, a previous video that um, was done. Link will be in the description. Um, now, if you are not already subscribed, please do um, click that notification bell so that you're notified whenever I post one of these um, solution um, to a past paper question. Now here we're looking at um, the 2017 May June technical drawing mechanical drawing past paper. All right, and this is paper two. And in this video we're looking at the sketch and design portions of the exam. Now here it says that section two sketch and design. Do not spend more than 30 minutes on this section. I'm assuming that they think it's easy and shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. Now it says that figure two on the enclosed sheet shows the plan and two elevations of a locating bracket drawn in first angle orthographic projection. Make an isometric drawing full size of the locating bracket with point A at its lowest point, 30 marks. So basically a mark per minute. All right, so let's capture this 30 marks and let's move on. All right, so let's scroll on. Here we have our locating bracket. As you can see, our front elevation, end view, and our plan um, view. All right, so let's head over to AutoCAD and let's get this one um, going. All right, so here, as you can see, let me check on something here. Yes, we're good. Um, I have copied over um, the question as well as um, the image of the um, bracket that we're going to be turning into an isometric. So let's start things off by first activating our ISO mode I'm using a later version so I can simply click on my isometric drafting mode here. I know that it's on because it is now highlighted to blue and my cursor has changed. First thing I'm going to be doing is drawing um, two lines or three lines doesn't really matter. One will be coming from my left like this and let me turn on Arthur here and the length of it is going to be equal to the width of this object here which is 100 and then I'm going to be going um, up in the here by the height that is given here which is 80 Yes, so I can go across by 100 as well. This is optional. I'm just making it this way. This is my way. All right. The next thing that we're going to be doing is that we're going to be, let me start off the other side um, to close things off. So I'm going to be switching to ISO right. And I'm going to be drawing a line from left to right. Um, width of it or the length of it is going to be equal to the depth of the object, which is 70 seen on the plan view so as you can see so 70 all right um i'm going to leave it there and i'm going to start things off um so i'm going to head back to my iso left and i'm going to start by drawing this circular portion here that you can see is sticking out here all right sticking out means that it touches the face here all right now we need to draw those circular portions so we need to find the center of those circles. Now we went up 30, we went up 80 that is, but we see that the object actually goes even further. And we can see that it says that the outer portion that represents the furthest distance, distance is 60. And so if the diameter is 60, it means that um, the radius is 30. So from here up to the top of the circle is actually 30. So what I'm going to do, let me locate the center of that circle by selecting this line here, copying it to my um, right by 30. And this is just to locate the center of the circle. All right. And then I'm going to draw an ellipse for my isometric circle. So I'm going to go here, click on ellipse, click on ellipse by center. Let's us reactivate our ellipse tool here. Then click on ISO circle. Then all we have to do now is find the center. Click there, open up, and then we enter the radius, which is 30. Everything match up. All right. We're going to continue and we're going to draw the other ellipse. 
So we have to reactivate ellipse command by simply pressing enter because it was the last one that we used. Click on ice circle, go back to the center, click, enter the radius. This radius, however, is um, diameter 40, so radius is 20. We enter 20 and we have both circles. All right, good. Now, once that is in, um, we can now make our way towards um, the back here, all right? Now we know that the circular portion here stretches to the back. How much does it stretch to the back by? Here we can see it is 70. So what I'll be doing is that I'm going to be switching to ISO right to push it further to the back or to the right hand side like that. So I'm going to grab onto both of these. I don't need to grab onto both. I really need to grab onto um, the outer one, but I'm going to grab onto both for this one here. All right, or let's not select both. Let's just select the outer one. I'm going to copy it to the back, grabbing onto the center here, and I'm pushing it to the back by 70. All right, did I enter 70? No. 70, enter. All right, so that's where that's going to be. All right, I now need to connect these two circles with a line, and I'm going from quadrant to um, should I say quadrant? All right, just like that. All right. Now, once that has done, um, it's time for us to draw the other portions. Now, we also know that um, this portion here is sticking out. Point A is going to be sticking out somewhere along here. All right, so it goes up at an angle and then touches the circle. All right, so that's what we're going to be focusing on. And we know that it's at the back because we can see it on the end view here. All right, that is at the back. All right, so I'm going to switch to ISO, ISO left because I'm going moving from right to left. And I'm going to click here to draw my line. Um, and I'm going to attach it to this line at a tangent. All right. So ensure that tangent is turned on on your snapping feature here. All right. Now we know that this um, little flange here, web, whatever you want to call it, is 15 millimeters wide. How do we know this? Because we can see it on our plan view, 15 millimeters. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to switch to ISO, ISO um, left, ISO right. I'm going to copy this line here and I'm going to copy it with the large circle as well to my left by um, that 15 millimeter measurements there. All right. Now, once you have that there, we now see things taking shape. All right. So there are some portions of this object here that is not going to be visible, such as all of this here portion here this in the background here but before we clean that up I'm going to be drawing a line from the front quadrant to the back something like this and I'm just going to draw it to a random distance like that all right and then I'm going to be working my cleaning up magic so cleaning up so cutting plane here cutting plane here activate my trim command and that should get rid of this portion here all right things are looking a lot better now all right also I'm also getting rid of everything beyond this line here because this circle that I copied forward was just to capture this little curvature um, right here. All right. And this and this is going to be filleted into one um, smooth curve. All right. Now, this portion here is underneath all of this fancy stuff. This. This is behind the cylinder, so we don't need all of that. So we need to trim away all that excess as well. So we're trimming away here. As you can see, things are taking shape nicely. All right, so the portion that are left are the this old section here and this piece, is of, this piece of flange that is holding up the cylinder there. Now the thickness for that is actually 15 millimeters. All right, so we're going to be um sorting out that or finding that portion no so what i'm going to do i'm going to take on this line here and we know that that little flange there actually um 
comes from the back to the front by 45 as you can see here all right but i'm going to keep it at the front here for now all right and then we'll work our way around all right so here is what i'm going to do i'm going to be switching to iso left to draw a line from here that way yeah and then i'm going to copy this line here to my um right by 15 and this will now show me where this flange here is going to be all right now it is going to be further to the back all right but what i really want to do is to i want to see my drawing to take shape so i feel like i'm doing something good so i'm just going to draw a line to the back like that and i'm going to be filleting them together like this all right um this line here i'm can i can now delete that because i have no further use now at this corner there is going to be a straight line going up and then i'm going to trim away the excess for some reason i just like to draw the line a bit past so that i'm not snapping to anything accidentally to mess up my drawing all right so um now i know that um remember i said that there what the flange this flange here that looks like it runs all the way to the front it actually comes to the front by a specific amount which is actually 45 so i want that so what am i going to do i have a reference line that i've just drawn up here and i'm going to be copying it to the front by that distance the 45 you could have copied it from the back over here it doesn't really matter i'm going to use it as a reference so i'm just going to grab onto this line here so i'm doing a bunch of unnecessary stuff but um there is wisdom to my madness all right all right so this is where the flange there that's this portion here will stop so it means that i need to draw up a line from that point there but i'm not going to be drawing it i'm simply going to be grabbing onto these two lines and moving them to that location and once i've done so i will now erase this line no further use for it um i'm going to do something weird here i'm going to fill it this line with this one and this line with this one to close off that portion i'll also fill it this line with this one and this line here these line that's going up into the cylinder not needed those are blocked would not see anything like that so we trim those out as you can see this is our object only thing that is missing now is this um, hole in the middle here. Now, what do we know about this hole? Where is it located? As we can see on our plan view, it is 30 millimeters. That's the center of the first curve to my left, my right here, or my left. 30. Then from that to the other center of this curve is actually another 30. So what am I going to do? I'm going to be drawing up uh vertical line reference line that is and i'm going to be copying it to my um left so i'm going to switch to iso iso left and i'm going to copy it to my left by 30 and then i'm going to enter 60 because 30 and 30 is 60. now i have both points let's erase our little reference line that we had here now how far up does this go so from here to up here how much is it now we can see from our end view that from the bottom to the center is actually 15 so what can we do we can now grab onto this line and we can copy it up by 15 and you realize that i'm not using my offset tool for some reason offset doesn't really work well in iso mode if there is a way please let me know so if there's a teacher out there that is watching this video um, let me know i would really love to know all right if it can work and how to make it work properly all right so let's now add those curvatures so let's go we're going to our ellipse tool ellipse by center let's reactivate our ellipse tool again click on iso circle then we go here what is the radius for this curve it says that it's six so we enter six i'm just going to grab onto this circle and i'm going to copy it to the other end over here 
then from this point I'm simply going to be drawing line on the top so from this intersection to that one there and from this intersection to that one there and now it's just a matter of me cleaning up my drawing getting rid of lines that I do not need so as well as this and this needs to be trimmed out so let's grab onto these two lines and trim away these portions of the curve all right and just like that our object is finished i'm just going to be a bit fancy now and i'm going to be drawing a line from left to right so i switch the eyes to right from this quadrant inwards like this well and then from this quadrant in here to somewhere along here I drew it a pass because I don't want to snap to anything and then the drawing will be kooky. Alright, so this is the object, this is the ISO completed. So the only thing that needs to be done now is to add some text. What is this text? This text is um, locating bracket. Locating bracket. Alright. Oh, and that is it now text is a bit small let me just scale it up instead of going through and um messing with anything all right let me turn off iso mode now because i'm done with it and this is point a right here so let me add that point a as well all right let's switch this to six and point a all right these are my texts let's place them on the relevant layer all right now all i have to do now is to simply lay out my drawing now everything is already set up in this space so all i'm doing is just going here and i'll zoom in around my drawing this is a sketch we don't need to make it all the way to scale and that is it um drawing completed now if this video was helpful please give a like share comment let your friends know what is going on here and please um, encourage them to subscribe hit the notification bell so they can know what's going on now the drawing autocad file or the uwd file with this specific drawing that i've just done will be linked in the description so you can access the file itself as well as the drawing environment you will also find the past paper that this question came from so you can practice it on your own and you'll have the drawing file to practice as well all right so see you in the next tutorial and remember if there is any request please put it in the comment section if you need classes just reach out in the comment section as well um, and i'll get back to you all right take care